What's up, everybody? My name is Mitchell Brewer, and welcome back to Encumbered. Glad to have you here. And if you were here on Sunday listening to our Bush Light Clash recap, you knew that something special was coming this week, and I am here to deliver on that promise today as we talk to the man that will attempt to make the day 2500 this year driving for legendary boxer Floyd Mayweather and the Money Team Racing, along with having a very busy schedule something that he hasn't seen much of in his short NASCAR career. That is right. Today, we are talking to Kaz Grala, who fills in on his upcoming season and fills us in on the details. What? Where did this come from? Everybody, we've heard rumors about the money team for years, literally years now. And we're all just wondering, what is this? He fills us in on that, fills us in on, is Floyd Mayweather going to be is Floyd Mayweather going to be at the day 2500? We asked him about that, and he gave us a response, and much, much more. So, without further ado, here is Kaz Grala. First off, thank you for joining me. How's your day going so far? Oh, busy as always. The last, uh, gosh, the last month has been wide open, and this week I'm sure is going to be the busiest of all. Well, I guess next week will be a little busy too. <laughs> So, so take me through that where you have like, you've had like multiple ride announcements. How does, how busy does that make your schedule? Are you constantly like doing like Zoom meetings and all sorts of this type of stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of, a lot of good interviews, a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings to get the stuff together, of course. And then a lot of a great interviews since the announcements, but I'll tell you the, the, the biggest challenge, honestly, is the fact that driving for three different teams in three different series is a lot for me to keep track of because I've got so many race seats, sets of seat belts, seat inserts, helmets, Hans, and I'm trying to like stay organized with, all right, this stuff is at this race shop, this stuff is at this race shop. After Daytona, this stuff needs to go from here to here because then I have a race over here and it, yeah, it's it's been really, really chaotic to try to try to organize all of that. And if I, if I don't organize it well, I'm going to end up losing track of stuff and not having what I need when I need it. And I just can't have that. You know, when you're at the racetrack, you, you need to have everything you need, <laughs> everything that you need there. You can't forget anything. So honestly, the, the biggest challenge for me is trying to make sure that I uh, coordinate everything the way I need to. And with all like meetings and stuff like that, how does that affect your uh, race prep, getting ready just just mentally and physically for all the racing that you're going to be doing this season? Yeah, I, I was. It's funny you mentioned that. I was thinking about that this morning. I really have not had any time in the last month to be a driver, to you know, to study, to get in the in the right headspace mentally, and to focus for the event. I've got next week as my week to do that. Um, you know, I've, there's so much to to try to coordinate with logistics about these different race teams going into Daytona. But once we're all at Daytona, at that point, everything's done. Everything's taken care of. Things are where they need to be. So I'm kind of thinking Monday next week, that's when I'm heading down to Florida. That's when I'm going to begin full focus, like blocking out all the other noise, all the other stuff that I've had on my mind that I've had to have on my mind um, with, with coordinating all of this. And then it's time to just be a driver, focus and, and be, be mentally prepared going into it. So I should have that chance to do it next week, but I haven't had the chance to do it yet. And let's dive a little bit into those rides. Obviously the major one that got announced last week was the opportunity with the money team racing. I'm just curious, how did that entire deal come together? Because we've heard rumors about that team coming up. We've heard rumors with your name associated with it. I'm just intrigued on how, like, how that all really fruitioned and got together for the H1500. Yeah, I, I've, I've been talking to Will Ockmoody actually for about almost, almost a year and a half now. Um, the, these conversations started in, in late 2020 after I made my cup debut. Um, regarding 2021 at that point. Um, of course, things have gotten pushed back to 2022. Pandemic has, has stalled some things really for everybody. Um, so it's, it's been a long time in the making. 
but but conversations really firmed up and got serious about October, November of last year. That's when they started getting traction on sponsorship, started, started really starting to put the pieces that you need in place to be able to go do this. And, you know, myself, just like everybody, early on was skeptical of them. You know, what, is it real? Are they really going to get any traction? Is this going to happen? You don't know. But somebody's got to take that leap. Somebody has to you know, have that vision that, that Floyd and his whole team that he's assembled for this program has to say, we're going to do this. People may not believe us at first, but we're going to make it happen. And they have. Uh, I've been really, really impressed with the, the way they've put everything together. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard as a new team, as a brand new team, no charter, to come in here and say, hey, we're going to sell sponsorship you know, a company's first question is, oh, well, tell us about the team. Well, the team doesn't exist yet. It's going to be a team. That's a difficult conversation. Obviously, you put Floyd's name into it, and that helps. Um, but it, they've, they've done an excellent job at, at, you know, crawling before they walk and walking before they run. So, you know, we're not jumping in feet first to a full-time season that's going to be, you know, a, a chaotic cluster we're really doing it the right way. We're, we're starting event by event, select races, building up from the ground and um, hopefully putting a, a great infrastructure in, in place so that the team can be a full-time Cup Series team in, in the next year or two. So um, yeah, it's, it's been since November that things have really started to finalize. And um, it, you know, through the holiday season, it's really hard to, to make things happen because People in the racing world and people in the corporate world for the sponsors are everyone's schedules are nuts. You know, it's it's hard to really make get it's it's hard to get a company to make a decision between Thanksgiving and Christmas because you just have so many people out of the office. So it was really January 3rd, I believe was the date. It was a Monday, the Monday after New Year's that it was like full-fledged, everything went zero to a hundred, like everybody's working on stuff, things are falling into place. Because at Christmas time, I had nothing on paper for 2022. And literally a week later, I had like three different things and three different series that, that firmed up. So, um, you know, it's, it's been pretty crazy busy trying to make this all work, but I wouldn't want it any other way. And you mentioned the chaotic cluster that's going on with just getting a new team started. Do you think it's like the perfect time to honestly have that chaotic cluster with pretty much everybody kind of having to start over with the next gen car? A hundred percent from a competitive standpoint. Absolutely. Uh, as, as a rookie and as a new team, sure. You want to start with a car that's on as even of a playing field as you can get um, from both of our perspectives. Obviously I think it's been well documented these next gen cars, partly because of the pandemic, partly because of the timing, there's been difficulty in getting all of the necessary parts to build cars for all of the teams. Um, and frankly, it's that way right now in pretty much every industry. So I think from, a, from that point of view, if we were jumping into a full season out of the gates, I think it would be a really difficult time for us to get in. Um, I just think that logistically getting everything that you need would have been tough in time because even the, even the, the assembled teams that, you know, an RCR that's been around for 50 years, they're having trouble getting everything and getting everything ready. That's just kind of how things are going right now. For, for, that we are, I think doing select races this year is going to be the, the right way for us to do it, getting in with the next gen car. Um, and then, like I said, hopefully, I, I think everybody involved in the program has the goal of trying to be full time as quickly as possible. And maybe that's 2023. And I got to ask the obvious question. Have you met Floyd yet? And is he going to be coming to any of the races this year? Uh, I'm hoping to see him at, at Daytona. His, his schedule has been pretty, pretty crazy because he's actually training for a fight. It's going to be coming up in the next month or so. Um, so I haven't gotten to meet him in person yet. Um, but I've been working closely with, with his team, his publicist, his, um, uh, his brand manager. So, uh, we are hoping that, that he's going to be able to carve out a, a day or two to, to make it to Daytona next week. 
And as a guy that you've been working hard your entire career just for any opportunity, what's it like to just have something kind of this magnitude where it's like you have a superstar in Floyd Mayweather, one of the biggest athletes in the world that you're working with now that he you got the opportunity with him. How cool is that for you? It's really cool. It's it's awesome. And and I really feel like with with Floyd involved and with the vision of the team, everybody involved, I, I feel like there's so much potential for this to to be a big deal and to to truly be successful. I I, I think that in a matter of years, this team has everything that, that it would need to go win cup races, to go contend for cup championships. Now, certainly off the bat, it's impossible to go do that day one, but I, I do think that there's the potential for it to grow to that. And so to be the guy in on the ground floor with this team, um, helping them build that program up to, to where they want it to be is a huge opportunity and a huge honor for me and, and definitely um, has a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity for, for my career. So uh, I'm really hoping that things go well with the team and I'm hoping that I, I get to stay a part of it. And obviously you mentioned those other rides that you have in the trucks and Xfinity series. What's it mean? You mentioned it. You didn't, you weren't sure of your plans in Christmas of last year. What's it mean to now have a pretty busy schedule looking into 2022? It's great. I, I mean, the last few years I've, I've gone into the seasons with very, very light schedules. Um, 2019 and 2020, this time uh, I had five races each of those years on the calendar. Uh, last year, I went into the, the season with four races on the calendar. And in both years, I have picked up random ones here and there. I've picked up a truck race, a couple truck races, an Xfinity race. So usually my schedule will grow a little bit and land at you know seven, eight, nine races, but still I'm going into the year right now with 17 races uh, on my schedule with the ability to build from there. So that's huge for me. That's double what I've done the in in any one year the last three years. So for for a young guy like myself, getting that seat time, that experience, and also staying warmed up, you know to jump into a car after you haven't been in one in a month or two months, especially the way it was the last two years with no practice, that's pretty, that's pretty difficult. Uh, so now, now I'm going to be able to be in the seat every other week or every third week. I'm going to have much more of a rhythm. There's going to be plenty of races of mine that are back-to-back -back weeks. So that I think that overall for myself as a driver inside the cockpit, I think that's going to be a huge benefit for me and, and keeping my name out there, staying fresh from a, a PR perspective when it comes to trying to sell sponsorship, that's really beneficial too. So this, this year is definitely shaping up to be a fun one and a, and a very uh, professionally uh, useful one for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that it, that it will lead me towards uh, landing ultimately that full-time ride in, in the next couple of years. I think, it's been no secret that that's what I've been working towards for a few years now. And um, I may not have one this year, but I've got a lot of races. So I'm, I'm really, really pumped. And that's what I, that's, that's the stepping stone I need to be able to, to get that true full-time ride. And last question for you, you've won in the truck series before, but with everything you've gone through, what would win number two mean oh, for you? Huge. It'd be it'd be really huge. You know, I, I think I, I think the one of the biggest things that I still have to prove is that I can win. I, I feel like I have proven that I can take less funded equipment and you know punch above our our weight in it. I think I've proven that I can run well, run up front, run consistently. I have that one win, but to get a second one in the bank is, is you know, a, a proof of concept to really show, yes, I can win. I can consistently do this. If I am in a position where I'm able to win, I can close that deal. I really want to continue to show that. And I personally know that I can, but you need everyone to know that you need to be able to show that. So uh, I, I think that this year could, could potentially be a, a great time to, to try to put myself in that position. Uh, especially with as many truck races as I'm doing with Youngs, we ran really, really well last year. We we were a, a front runner at, at all the road courses last year. 
So I, I definitely look to the road courses this year as being um, places uh, that we could potentially win. But we've also got a bunch of oval races on the schedule this year that I have not raced on an oval with Youngs yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if we find ourselves in a great position to try to capitalize on a win there too. So um, definitely um, a lot of excitement going into this year and, and a lot of hope. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for your time and best of luck this season. Can't wait to see that car out on the track at Daytona, that 50 car. That looks really good. It's going to be bright. You will not miss it. Um, um, that's going to be pretty cool. Pit Viper.